So you're wondering why you got a quote for three or four grand to do the timing chain on your canyon. Well, it's because every engineer that worked on this was in a different room and didn't talk to any other engineers when they built this thing. So yeah, to get up the timing chain, it's quite a job. It's uh, everything in here has to come off and out, and then underneath the oil pan needs to drop off so that you can take one bolt out that holds in the timing cover. And if you have a four-wheel drive, you need to pull the axle out so that you can get at that bolt to pull the timing cover off as well. Great. So a full kit. Um, it's kind of a shame that the timing chain has to be replaced in the first place. I think they make a tensioner and it'll outlast the truck. But uh, this thing's got 240,000 kilometers on it, and. Uh, yeah, still worth doing. Can't pass the e-test because the engine light's on because apparently the, uh, uh, the GM dealership told them the timing chain needs to be done. So, here we go. All right, so we need to get at the valve cover here and we need to get it off. And in order to do that, we have to take all of this stuff off of here. So the best thing to do is take it off, mark it, uh, take pictures beforehand, uh, mark it and clean it and put it off to the side so you know where it goes when you're about to put it back together. Okay, to get the fan off, it's an inch and a half wrench, works pretty good. It's usually right hand threads. You just take it and just try and crack it. And just the, the vibrations of it will knock the fan off. You can see that. You can just spin that off. There you go. All right, take this nut off. You need a big bar, somebody strong. I couldn't find anybody, so I just grabbed Aaron. <laughs> you can stick a screwdriver in here. This is a two-person job. You won't, you won't get it with one hand. Nope. <laughs> but that, and that's a three-quarter inch socket set. Uh, you'd be hard pressed to do it with a half half inch socket. So just keep it from somehow keep the engine from turning and crack the nut loose. It's torqued to yield, 250 foot pounds plus some more. Um, but you can also stick it in gear or have somebody hold this the flywheel or the ring gear with a screwdriver same same kind of way but uh we got it this way so. here you pull all grunt all right that helps keep in mind that that bolt needs to be replaced too when you're done all right another two-man job here so this uh your dipstick dipstick uh, tube it got stuck in there it's uh, pretty corroded there's also an o-ring in there so what you want to do is you want to just heat it up with a brazing torch a little bit just heat the uh, the tube up itself up here and uh, from the expanding and the contracting it'll uh, it'll break the rust loose and you should be able to just uh, pop it out to get the oil paint off all right pretty difficult right here there's a, a bracket here to um, mount all of your wires to um, and it's pretty difficult to get off. There's a 10 mil nut here and a 10 mil here as well, but that's not all of them. There's one where you need to actually unclip all of the looming from it here, unclip all the looming, and then come down in here, tuck it all the way, and right up there, you can see where my finger is, just right there, that silver head. There's a 10 mil bolt there, you need to take that out. And that will move this bracket here so that you can get at the bolts for the intake manifold. Lots of fun. So the only way to get that balancer off is with a three jaw puller, but it's, it's very tight to the timing cover. So the jaws like to slip out. So if your puller doesn't fit perfect, you can use something like a pair of chain vice grips around the jaws to hold them tight. And it is the only way to get that balancer off. Here's the timing chain and you can see that it's pretty loose. There's no way that you're gonna be able to take up this slack with a tensioner of any kind or um, any other way. You couldn't even take a link out, that's not a good idea. So we're gonna replace it. All right, so here's the two timing chains. You can tell that they're different. One has a, is a double link stack and the other is a triple link stack or four link stack or whatever you wanna call that. This chain goes in the front of the timing. This chain goes in the rear. So you can see the amount of wear just between the, the new one and the old one. Um, to get the old one out, there's a real pain. I don't, I don't know what they were thinking, but there's no room to get the chain past this little guy, this little knob here, or actually underneath. There's a tool at the back here to keep the cams uh, straight to help lining it up, but a piece of angle iron, clean angle iron with a couple of vice grips does the exact same thing. So um, we're gonna change this gear, line up the marks again, we'll show you how to do that. Then we'll do the chain at the back. We had to pull the transmission to get at the uh, balancer chain at the back. And then once that's set, we can start reassembling again. So here we go. 
Uh, the intake cam bolt that goes to 18 foot pounds and then another 100 degrees. So this little ha handy tool, you put it on, set it to zero, and then you're able to tighten it. The needle will turn, tell you when it's 100, and then you know it's uh, where it's supposed to be. To keep the engine from turning, we just put a vice grip in between the lobes. Uh, it doesn't hurt anything on the cam, keeps it from spinning. Um, otherwise, you gotta do the flywheel on the back, or yeah, um, I don't even know how else. You could also put a socket in between one of the throws on the rods where it butts up against the uh, the engine block, and that will keep the engine from turning as well. That kind of a two-person job because when you back off or slack off, the socket will drop out. All right, so just a quick thing here: uh, when you line up the uh, timing positions uh, with the chain and the gears there's uh, marks on each and there's a black link when you disassemble it you need to make sure that those are all lined up you need to have the mark a black link a black link in the middle a black link on this one with the mark and a black link on the mark as well down there that lets you know that everything is timed correctly and is at uh, top dead center number one cylinder when you assemble it you need to assemble it in the same order make sure that your black link is over top of the mark and this mark and the lower mark as well and then tighten everything now when you go to put your 24 millimeter socket on here and cycle it around just to make sure that everything is working correctly you're going to notice that the link actually slips a tooth it's not slipping a tooth it's not jumping anywhere it's actually just the way that this is designed that uh, the cam will actually not line up every time so if i were to spin the crankshaft around two times for each one of these links which there is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six here. That'd be 12 turns. So just like I said, I just spun the crank around 12 times and you can see our black link lined back up with our uh, cam actuator gear mark and our intake camshaft gear mark. And if you can see it, the lower mark is also lined up with the crankshaft. So don't be alarmed. Just uh, spin it around a few more times and make sure everything lines up. Okay, just like the front timing cover, sorry for the bad lighting, um, the teeth only line up every certain amount of rotation. So don't be scared. Uh, you can tell that this one's three teeth, uh, three chains off from this mark. This, this mark here is three teeth off from that mark. There's a black link that will line up with this one and there's a black link that lines up with a mark on this balancer and there's a black link that lines up with this right here. Each one of these black links has 10 links in between. So they're evenly spaced on the chain, but they only all line up probably every 11 or 22 rotations. Don't worry about that. Take it off and just line up all your black links again and, and there's no problem with that. So the black link lines up with the mark right here and right now we're at top dead center compression number one and um, the, the black link will line up on the right balancer here. Left balancer is right here yeah. and um, the links, these extra links will line up with a little mark on the uh, guide right there. So just put it, um, you can rotate it again. If you rotate three turns, then you'll be back to where we are right now. But don't worry about it. Just take it off and line up the marks. You're good to go. Keep in mind that the front has, the front chain has absolutely nothing to do with the back chain. This is completely separate. Um, even though we didn't, all the marks are lined up at the front, doesn't matter. As long as you line up the links with the mark on the crank and on the two balancers, you're golden. So here we go. All right, so when you want to get the chain out, you need to remove the tensioner and then you need to remove this uh, counter shaft sprocket. And to do that, this is a left hand thread, 13 millimeter bolt. So you need to um, put these flywheel bolts in, uh, grab a bar and have someone hold on to it for you if you can't do it yourself. And then twist this nut off in the reverse thread. And then you pull the sprocket off and the chain shall all come off together as one. So if you have random lights on on your dash, whether it be ABS or battery or lights or traction control, um, before you take it to the dealer, just pop your hood and, and look for corrosion like this. Um, uh, we've already cleaned the white this off just temporarily because we got a whole new uh, connector for it. Um, the connector so corroded that it broke and uh, we need to replace that. Now in doing so, I also found corrosion on, on the main uh, fuse box. We're gonna clean that up 
and then the one wire here I don't even know what it's for so corroded it broke off too so just just popping those off and fixing those few little uh, things before you um, spend the money at the dealer who knows we might be able to fix the problem this truck has the traction control on and the uh, uh, tire monitor sensor um, I'm not sure what this wire is but we'll fix it and then see if it uh, changes anything um, the corrosion does all sorts of things it, it's a it's a draw on the system so uh, what it does is it could put certain sensors out of parameters and, and trigger your engine like come on so we're gonna uh, clean these up uh, make sure everything's nice and clean and tight and then uh, see if it makes a difference much better So many of you might know that my first vehicle was an 80s, 1987 S10. Regular cab, short box, two wheel drive, five speed, 2.4 liter, and it was the big yeesh, or the small little box of awesomeness. It's what got me into mechanics, it's what started my love affair with turning wrenches. I got it when I was 15, took one auto class in grade nine, I knew what a tire, how to change a tire and a wiper, and that was it. I put a new engine in it, painted it, uh, got seats from a blazer somebody was putting two blazers together one pulled in his driveway and said hey can I I see you're missing a radio can I trade you a couple seats for a radio and and that's what started my bartering and my um, my swapping and my building my own vehicles but if I would have bought this and that was 23 years ago if I would have bought this Canyon as my first vehicle I might be a Ford guy or a Dodge guy because this thing is stupid I have two little girls one's copying the other but they're both in the Y stage why 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 I'm working on this thing going why why do you have to pull the oil pan to remove the oil pump that's attached to the timing cover so I can do the timing chain? That's that's garbage. If this was four-wheel drive, I'd have to drop the front axle. If uh, um, there's a balancer at the back, I gotta pull the transmission to get at the balancer chain. Like, it's part of the timing chain, so I gotta do it. But what an engineering nightmare. Why would you put brakes behind a wheel bearing? So you have to pull your wheel bearing off to get at your brakes. And I know why, it's, and it worked because um, the customer said, place my brakes, and well, since you gotta pull the wheel bearings anyway, might as well replace them. Might as well throw another 600, 800 bucks at it. What a pain. So, um, this great truck, fuel efficient. I almost traded one for my Silverado before I put the Cummins in it, but he still wanted money on top, another story besides. But um, great little truck, fuel efficient, but all the money that you save in fuel, you spend in, in maintenance and repairs on stupid engineering that makes it 10 times more difficult than it's supposed to be. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I would buy it new, and I, I know a construction guy, uh, an excavating guy who had a little canyon and he loved it They're bombing around he between his fleet he, he had a fleet of v10 fords and, and a bunch of garbage power strokes and the little canyon just kept going forever and ever and he figured out his his fuel savings on the canyon is like astronomical compared to a three-quarter ton truck he said if i could i'd send all my guys in one of these little canyons but it, it, it's a it's an ego thing too you can't show up at an excavating company with these little quarter ton trucks you gotta have a full size but um, yeah drive it uh, your engine light is gonna come on because there's way too much crap going on under the hood here and um, yeah I would buy it and get rid of it after 150,000 clicks I don't know if I would buy it as a good deal as somebody else's leftover because um, if I didn't have the hoist to do this job uh, I'd be pretty pissed off in my driveway um, I built my entire S10 and in, in, in my barn and my driveway with tractors and not this thing I don't know um, yeah if uh, if this would have been my first truck I'd probably be driving a Ford as a daily or a Dodge and I know that's just swearing but anyway um, just if you're watching this video this is mainly just for you to know what you're getting into if um, you're thinking about a Canyon the timing chains they go slack you turn on your engine light and 
and it is a big, big job. So I figure about 20 hours into it between pulling the tranny and uh, doing all the work under the hood. And then we had another bunch of issues too. Um, shift solenoids weren't working, so it was actually in limp mode when I got it to replace those. Um, fun fact, they're the same shift solenoids as a 4L60, as the ones that are in the, the canyon. But uh, yeah, be, beware, beware of these. Don't pay too much for them used. And uh, yeah, if you enjoy working on them, and uh, if you enjoy getting frustrated and saying why, then get yourself a canyon or a Colorado. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe because you never know what you're going to see next week on DeBoss Garage. If you like what you see, there's a lot of stuff happening to help support the channel. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich.